said, my name is Jeannie Vogel. Um, I've lived here in Door County all my life. I've been a resident of the town of Sebastopol since 1986. Um, my children did not go to school here um, because of the thing that goes on with Bayshore Drive where I lived. Um, my children attended Sturgeon Bay, which meant that I never got through this school other than um, visiting the gymnasium. So um, when I received the card to um, be uh, invited to become a CFAC member, uh, I said, you know, I, I think I would like to serve on that committee. Um, I think that education is important and, and children, as the cliche goes, is our future. So um, the first evening I <laughs> remember walking through the facility with Kyle and I chuckled because I had no idea and we're walking through and I just couldn't believe the condition of this school. And the amazing part was to think that our academics here are so strong, that our students do so well based on the fact that the condition of this school is frankly appalling. So um, that's why I became involved. Um, I'm glad I did. It's been a real education for me. I've got to meet some wonderful people. Um, as a matter of fact, we've had, we had uh, 30 members on this committee. Um, we met for 11 months, 15 plus meetings. We probably each spent 30 plus hours of time um, serving on this committee. Uh, and um, I, really, I, I really feel very strongly uh, that we need to support this referendum. Um, and my um, fellow CFAC members are going to um, go through more details um, with you. But I appreciate um, being heard, and I appreciate the time that the Board of Education spends to uh, make sure that the children in Sebastopol have a great education. All right. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, Aaron LeClaire, uh, resident of the town of Jacksonport. Um, I guess the, I was asked to be on the committee. Um, I didn't quite notice the flyer. The mail, um, which kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things. Um, one, it, the reason I decided to be part of it is it gave me an opportunity to uh, kind of get back, be part of the district, um, and not in the capacity that you folks are and the sacrifices you make for the community, for the kids, for the schools, uh, which is obviously normally underappreciated. You all know that, but it is appreciated, the efforts you make uh, that that go into the success of this school. And, and referencing the academic success that that we have here, it, it, this is an opportunity for us to kind of bring the facilities up to par with that and start taking the next step forward. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about section two a little bit. And as Jeannie referenced, we, we went, you know, over 30 hours were put in by various community members, and the community is made up of a very good cross-section of the community, which was great. And what we had to do is we worked with the, the consultants that the district had um, in preparing options. Um, we, we were at nine options at one point, and we, we whittled those down to two, and those were based off of not dreams, hopes and dreams of what could be the greatest school ever built in the country, right? Everybody would want that. But they were, they were based off realities, and realities that we got from maintenance personnel, from your school staff, and just from um, the, the sports aspects, arts aspects, all aspects. It wasn't anything in particular. And everything was looked at uh, very objectively to make sure we weren't uh, you know, this committee was made up of a lot of taxpayers, some not, um, or um, all taxpayers, but some voting, some not, and to make sure we're spending their money wisely because it's it's our money. Um, so we, the, this committee took that to heart to make sure we were doing the right thing and to to make sure we weren't over asking. Um, we whittled it down to the two options that we prepared for survey. A lot of effort went into preparing that survey. Um, based off past history um, of people not knowing about surveys, things like that, all the different things we heard we wanted to take into consideration to make sure we got the, the best feedback we could. So um, Linda will talk to you about the survey. I'll try not to step on that too much here. But we whittled it down to the two options. And you can see those here. Option one, the, the 
a brand new school district with 57 million. Um, option two was the kind of tear down remodel of 45 million. And then you can see the, the informational packet that went out to folks that was part of the pre-survey information to try to make people aware. Um, there was Facebook campaigns, every, anything we could think of to make sure our, our residents, taxpayers, knew what was coming so they could have their input as well. Um, and that led to what Lynn will talk, talk to you about. Um, were you going to come back to all three of us when we talk about our recommendations? Yeah. All right. So, Linda. All right, thank you. My name is Linda Waite. Um, I grew up just down the street here on a family farm, and I graduated from Sebastopol in 1969. I did leave. I came back and I've been a permanent resident here in the town of Sebastopol since 1999. For the past 160 years, Sebastopol has had the benefit of this strong community spirit at the town level, the school level, um, our local hamlets of Institute and Valmy, our dairy breakfast, our threshery, our turkey trot, all these events that happen in the Sebastopol community. And I look at the success of fundraisers when it comes to needy families or uh, raising funds for scholarship. We just all chip in and we are a true community when it comes to a worthy cause. Um, so nearly all of these things have a connection to Sebastopol School. Schools teach civic responsibility and they help us produce responsible citizens. Um, I look at the Sebastopol schools ratings and achievements um, both state and at national levels they're nearly impeccable so um, I was asked so because of my involvement with this community that I love and have a passion for um, I volunteered for the CFAC committee to explore the options on renovation and or new construction um, we were not um, given the um, charge to look at consolidation or dissolving. That was um, just because um, when it comes to, I don't know if I find my notes here, I'm sorry. Um, I know a substantial number of taxpayers have asked why that was not explored. I believe it was explored by both the school board and our superintendent. and. Um, consolidation to split to the neighboring schools would still if it was a consolidation and we split I believe we'd still have to maintain some in infrastructure and I believe we'd still have to have some staff uh, dissolution being most likely absorbed by our school district to the south would have required that district to uh, you know to accept five to six hundred students obviously they would have to substantially invest in their infrastructure and staff and that obviously would affect the tax levy no rate which is already twice of that of Sebastopol so our consultants did ask me to speak briefly about the survey that went out the survey went out earlier this summer um, approximately 2700 I believe and we had a response of 915 that's a 30 percent response which is uh, almost double of the normal, what, 15 to 20 percent, that is the average. And of that, on that survey, 60 percent of the responses indicated to do something with this school. And they would support a, a referendum, unfortunately, not to the tune of 45 million and not to the tune of, 40, of uh, 57 million, but they did favor doing something and the percentage to favor a new bill was higher than the percentage to do a renovation and 70 percent supported um, the operational referendum of two million so I'm not going to go through all the details of the survey um, like I said the responses um, excellent response percentage um, the survey explained the mill rates and all of that. Um, this, the uh, results are available on our web on the school website, I believe. 
or um, talk to any of the school board members. They'll be happy to have you to help you with that. So basically, um, I support the recent, this recent um, addition slash renovation at an estimated cost of $25 million. I believe it is in the best interest of our students, our community. It's a long-term investment, and I hope to see this school here for a long time to come. Thank you. So we're, uh, Megan and I are going to jump in. I'm Clint Selle from Bay Architects. I'm just going to quickly go through um, the tab, um, kind of the first part of tab four. Um, however, before we jump to tab four, um, I do want to just kind of flip back to uh, tab one and kind of just talk about the committee charge, um, just kind of, because I think reevaluating that and understanding how we took the results of the survey and uh, weave that into this final solution. I think some, you know, some of the points in this I think are very vital to kind of reevaluate um, looking at that. So again, um, the, the first bullet point is about needs, right? Uh, infrastructure, building systems, educational needs. Uh, really evaluating it. And we spent a lot of time looking at that. We looked at some pretty pictures of other schools. Um, but uh, you know, we talked in depth about uh, LED lighting and, and a number of different things as we went through the process. Uh, proposing options, again, very evident. We looked at uh, a number of different scenarios to consider um, for this. Um, purposeful uh, spaces, so innovative learning, um, uh, accommodating technology, um, and allowing parents and staff and students to collaborate in a, in a modern learning environment was also a, a very important as we considered it. And I think number four probably hits it on the head as far as what we received back from the community in, in, the, in the survey responses. You know, it'd be great to have a brand new building, it'd be great to have a, a massive addition here, but in terms of what your community will support, um, they, they asked, you know, asked us to really reevaluate. So that's really kind of, I think, the most significant here, thing here in terms of how to evaluate that survey and, and where that led us to. And then obviously, um, this group has done a great job, it, you know, as, as they indicated, talking to their neighbors, understanding um, you know, the, their web of friends and, and people that, that they work with and, and communicating this out to the public, um, especially during that effort of the survey where um, the school board and Kyle went to knocking on every door that, that would allow the district uh, in to, to, to really start to communicate that. So again, as we re evaluated the, the results from the survey, I think we really came back to the essence of what, what do we truly need, what do we truly see as the, um, the, the, the part of this building that, that really needs to be addressed. And, and the committee, I think, did a great job distilling that down to um, looking at a solution where we replace that three-story elementary building and looking at a solution where we update our tech ed, ag, and arts area to support um, the type of learning that those kids um, deserve. So our, really our plan kind of focused on those um, areas. And I think overall when, when you consider the plan, the great thing about it is really kind of everybody got something you know, with this. This isn't an elementary solution, this isn't a middle school solution, this isn't the high school solution. Uh, I think everyone's really going to benefit from this in, um, overall. So the, the first plan you see at the, uh, kind of a very macro level is our, our um, site plan um, for this. Um, if you flip to the next page, it's a little bit more magnified and you can see. Um, again, the, the, the key moves in terms of the site is we will, we will raise, we will uh, demolish the uh, three-story elementary building. We will demolish the tech ed building. In its place will become a parking lot and drop-off loop um, scenario for um, students and parents throughout the day. Um, the 1990-91 uh, uh, gymnasium will remain, locker rooms will remain, music area will remain, uh, as well as the, um, the bulk of the current high school middle school will remain in this case. So you can see some of the pink areas, excuse me, highlighted in the existing um, 60s building that's renovating some of the science classrooms, which again on our tours were kind of one of those areas where we really thought we could do better for our students. Um, we also have to make some modifications to the elevator, which currently serves a, a floor level that will no longer exist. Um, and then um, again, our addition here, the yellow, is connecting uh, those two buildings. We'll, we'll work to reconnect those two buildings. 
Another focus we looked at is, you know, the constructability. How can this be built while we maintain your current school? So this location and kind of the orientation of this building will serve, um, serve us well during the construction phase of the project where these students can remain uh, in the, their current classrooms in various areas. We can build this and then move the students out, demolish the building, and do some of the other renovation work. So I think from that end, it works very well as well. Uh, kind of from an overall perspective, again, your, your high school, middle school entrance will continue to function as it is. And you currently have a, a secure entry vestibule sequence there. Uh, the elementary um, will have a new entrance uh, kind of in this location, in this kind of courtyard area off of, again, this drop-off loop and parking. Um, there's a early childhood um, 4K wing of the building and kindergarten wing of the building, first and second grade along this corridor. And then this corridor extending up is kind of where um, some of the high school functions will be located. Again, as I mentioned, um, specifically tech ed, ag, um, some STEAM STEM, um, fab lab spaces, and then elementary library and um, art. On the second floor, um, we have, so kind of turn the page, we have um, uh, third through sixth grade located up on the second floor as well as um, associated special ed and computer lab spaces for those. I think the key thing um, with this plan and I think with that, any plan is, you know, how do we accommodate future growth or, um, you know, shifts in education. And so part of the idea is that we design um, the structure for some of the, the first floor buildings that they can accommodate a future second floor. So you can kind of see that um, notated in the plan. Um, I, when we met back with the uh, CFAC committee after uh, the, the survey results and kind of looked and considered at some options, a, a couple things they wrestled with was whether we build new science classrooms as part of this addition or we renovate in place. So in, in this instance, the, the group decided to renovate in place. So this was planned to kind of be future science potentially. Again, it could be future classrooms for any part of the high school, middle school. Um, another thing that the group I think wrestled with was um, just additional site work in terms of uh, specifically kind of the parking lot out here. And again, I think as a, as a group, we didn't want to sacrifice the entire referendum, again, recognizing the, the need and the, the kind of the charge of the community to really be fiscally responsible with the overall tax burden on the taxpayers. So um, I think specifically the parking, we're hopeful that as this project continues and if there's, you know, as we go through the process and if there's kind of money left over, that might be an area that we tackle, you know, a little bit more work where it's something the district can plan for um, in the long run. But again, overall the idea was um, finding a plan and solution that really met those critical uh, essential needs for the district. So I'll talk about the cost to, to the district and then to each individual tax paid home. So what the survey indirectly, one piece of information that we indirectly got out of the survey was that community members care about the dollars and cents because they supported, they gave the district permission to move forward with the survey and they think the best solution was to build a new building. However, when they saw the price tag of $57 million, that really scared them, which is not uncommon in communities, so you're not alone. So coming up, the CFAC is recommending a solution that I think is great because not only are you you're getting new construction, but you're also every student's getting something out of that. Um, so that total comes in at twenty five point one million dollars. So that project that Clint just ran through comes in at twenty five point one million dollars. So the community, if the board were to move forward with this, the community had the opportunity to still get new construction, still let every student have uh, or have the opportunity to work in new spaces but at half the cost less than half the cost of what, or more than half the cost of what you originally surveyed so that 25 million dollars you're investing about a million dollars into renovations so the science room renovations that Clint was talking about but then also some infrastructure renovations and also tie-ins to ex your existing building and then 24 million of that is actually the new construction and then this is your total project cost. So if the district were to move forward with this referendum, 
it's our job to make sure that we do, we know that we cannot exceed $25.1 million. So we're promising you that we'll get that scope of work within that $25.1 million. And then had Clint had said that the last CFAC meeting, the group went back and forth with possible other projects on top of this base project. So this was considered the base project, but then there was a science project and the site improvement. So that was coming in about $27.5 million. So the group went back to their charge and they focused on the needs and they identified the needs as a base project of the $25.1 million. So that $25.1 million is what it would what it costs the district as a whole. That project's going to cost $25.1 million. But what people care about is what it costs them as a taxpayer and as a homeowner in the Sebastopol community. And so this chart here on page 47, it's complex because it actually shows how your debt would be paid off. But the important thing to look at is on the far right, about three quarters of the way down the page, you see an impact of $1.20. So that means for every $100,000 of home value, if this referendum were to pass, it would, call, it would cost taxpayers $120 a year. Which, yes, that is a lot of money, but if you break it down each month, that's about 10 bucks a month per $100,000 of home value. So that's missing out on one lunch out a month. So that's something more palatable to break down for a community member to see, yes, I'm, it's $10 a month as opposed to $120 a year. But you're getting a great solution to move forward for the next several generations of students for $10 investment a month. Are there any other presentations? I guess I'd be the last one. The ladies spoke as to their support of it, and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the reality is I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm tied very deeply here. Both my children go to school here. My wife is a teacher here. That, you know, that gives me a lot of buy-in, a lot. Much more than a lot of taxpayers have. Um, the work that I do on a daily basis gives me a, another perspective on this school building here. And the, the safety and security uh, concerns me deeply. This helps us address that problem as well. Um, you know, again, I, I reference the work that this committee put in was personal to this group. And they took their charges very seriously to be responsible with the taxpayers' dollars. Yes, it'd be great to have a brand new school, starting from scratch, but that isn't reality in today's world. This is the best we can do with the taxpayer's dollar to ensure the, the safety and security of our children, but also to give the, the, the teachers, the staff, the, the proper tools and facility to keep doing what they've been doing, and that's excelling. This will help bring that to an even higher level. So our committee does support it. I do support it. Um, you know, we hope you take those recommendations to heart. So thank you. Erin, since we're filming this, would, cool. uh, so would you tell people what your position is? No. Your, no? OK. Yeah. Can't do it. OK. Very good. The school board, do you have any questions for the well, no, committee members? I just members? wanted to say thank you to the three of you and the rest of the committee. I attended some of the meetings and just the effort and the time you guys all put into it I, is much appreciated I know by everyone here and I think in the community as a well. whole. So thank you. thank you. And I think we thank you back because a number of you were at every meeting as well or, or the majority of them and, and so obviously the, the board was very much in, involved in wanting to do the best they could for the children of this community. So thank you. Okay, if there are no questions, then thank you all very much for attending tonight. <clears throat> we'll be talking about this on our agenda a little bit later. <clears throat>